afternoon. Glad you're here tonight. I forgot to mention to you this morning, I'm, I'm still not sure who um, told me they had some men's cologne that they were giving away and asked me if they could just sit it back here. On the, it was a lady that asked me this, and I can't remember who Lisa it was. Smith. Oh, Lisa Smith. Okay, all right. Lisa Smith did it. Anyway, there is some cologne back there, some men's cologne if you want some. I actually threw some on me, and I'm, it's an obsession, and I'm not obsessed with it. It's, uh, now it's all over me right now. I'm like, ugh. But anyway, so get it out of here. And uh, if you want this, uh, you want this pocket one that I got, I said, man, it's a pretty cool little pocket one. You just throw it on there. <laughs> but I'll probably lose it. And, uh, but anyway, if you want that one too, you can have it. Uh, amen? All right. Good to see you. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. Thank you uh, for the service uh, that we're about to have. And thank you for this morning, Father. Thank you for speaking to our hearts, Lord, showing us uh, what we have uh, since we've been placed in Christ. And our, our standing can never change. We know our state uh, oftentimes can be up and down, in and out. And uh, we know that that's not your purpose. Uh, you want us to be steady. Uh, you, uh, you want us to be faithful. And uh, God, we know that uh, we're dealing with a lot of things today. We're bombarded with a lot of issues, a lot of problems. And uh, we just pray, God, that uh, we would give these things over to you and allow you to work. And uh, just guide us and direct us into all truth. As we look tonight in this wonderful psalm, uh, is credited to Solomon. Uh, we just pray, uh, God, that uh, you would speak to our hearts through that. Help us to realize that whatever is built uh, uh, apart from you is done in vain. And so we pray, God, again tonight, you bless the choir. Thank you, Jeremy, filling in. And we do pray you'd be with the rest of our folks uh, wherever they might be tonight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Thank you. 
but uh, uh, Brother Jesse, we pray for us, please, sir. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for allowing us to be able to come to church. I ask Lord, you just give us the gifts to you. If you'll fix your past, be past with grace. Thank you again for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. Please thank Amen. All right, don't forget, uh, uh, December 19th, next Sunday, we'll be having Sunday school and our Christmas music program. Certainly invite people and uh, sign up for that as far as for our dinner. Uh, looks like we are going to have some fried chicken and some green beans, and I think we're going to go with some uh, boiled, how do you say that, boiled uh, red potatoes and uh, some yeast rolls, and so will be nice, and uh, you can just come, bring a drink and a dessert, and don't have to do anything else but eat, okay? And so we're looking forward to that uh, next Sunday. And uh, like I said, we'll be inviting some folks to that if you would. Christmas cards, already getting some of those in, and uh, take the ones uh, that are already out there for you. That'd be great. And uh, we'll do next uh, Sunday, but you can bring them in Wednesday too. That will be fine. And then don't forget on the 26th, also invite some folks to that. We have a missionary coming with his family. Uh, they're going to, are, are they serve in Togo and uh, actually reaching their own people. And uh, like I said, real blessing uh, this past Wednesday night to have uh, Emmanuel and Bella uh, with us. And uh, so just uh, pray that that would go well and, and uh, their whole family will be here and they'll have that service um, on the 26th. <clears throat> All right. Forever Hymnal, we'll do one more song, uh, 288, We Three Kings, 288. <laughs>
Colorado, and so yesterday around three, and uh, so continue to pray for them. That they would have a good time, and, and uh, Hannah will be okay on their trip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I didn't mention this morning, but continue to pray for uh, Helen Councilman. Um, of course, she's just having all kinds of problems, you know, with eating and stuff, and just choking and things like that. So I want to pray for her. Continue to pray for the Bobby Patterson family and uh, continue to lift them up uh, to the Lord in prayer. Uh, pray for Suzanne. She mentioned to us this morning that um, she's got another mass, and uh, so they're going to have to do a CT scan on that. Uh, so pray for her. And then uh, Junior Lucas, continue to pray for him as he doesn't have very many more days um, here on earth. And so just lift him up, if you would, in prayer. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. read my own writing, so I'm not sure what that says. Any other requests? Oh, Jeremiah, pray for Jeremiah. Um, he's got COVID, um, and so lift him up, and also continue to pray for my mom and dad. They're both getting better um, with COVID and uh, doing good. I think today would be their uh, 11th day, I think, and so lift them up to the Lord in prayer, if you would. Yes, Janie? Chest pains. Yes, but well, yeah. Pastor Mike Darn, he has COVID, and uh, several members of his church have the COVID. And especially, I remember Miss Hazel Griffin. She went back to get a nuclear scan. They found more cancer and cancer in her bones now. So, just remember her in prayer. Okay, all right, let's certainly pray for Pastor Mike Gardner and uh, his church there with uh, COVID, and then pray for Hazel. Griffith in this um, cancer. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yes, Randy. Do you remember mom? Yes, yeah, sure. Right. Sorry about that. All right, let's continue to pray for Inez Dowd. Now, she's still in the rehab. Yes, yeah, she's in Sanford Rehab. Okay. All and right. also, George Odom, he's I don't know where he's just like a baby now. They have to have somebody with him 24 hours a day. He can't do anything. Just no one can hold anything except he's there. Okay. All right. Let's certainly pray for George Oldham. Anybody else? All right. So we take these to the Lord in prayer. And uh, certainly we'll give these over to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thankful once again to be able to come into thee, come unto thee with um, prayer requests and not only the ones that were spoken tonight but those that are unspoken um, we're thankful that you know all of the needs that we have um, we're also thankful that you are a God who can meet all those needs mm -hmm. uh, and we don't even have to tell you how to do it we're thankful that you are mindful of every breath we take, every detail of our physical being, but <clears throat> also every detail of our spiritual being. And Father, we pray for the physical um, infirmities that have been mentioned tonight, and we think of those who are sorrowing, and uh, think that this is a difficult time of year to have lost a loved one or have someone so near to death. We pray, our Father, that you might just give the comfort that is needed. Thank you for um, those who went caroling from Friday night and for uh, the blessing that it seems to have been. We pray, our Father, that the things that we do, the things that we say, might um, be a good testimony for you. That those who know us and see us and hear us will learn more of the Lord Jesus Christ just as they observe our lives and our Father we confess that far too many times we do fail uh, we fail thee we are inconsistent and many times unappreciative and we um, tend to have some of those uh, qualities that 
the word of God says will be evident in the last days, and they shouldn't be evident in us, but they are. We're thankful that when we do fail thee, when we sin, that thou art a loving God, you uh, are willing to forgive us and cleanse us and let us start all over. And Father, we just uh, pray that tonight as we look into thy word again, into one of thy psalms, we pray that you might speak to our hearts again and draw us close to thyself. We ask all these things in the name of the one who loved us and gave himself for us, even the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, as you turn in your Bibles to uh, Psalm 127, Psalm 127, hard to believe that we've already gone through uh, 23 <laughs> psalms and, uh, <clears throat> already. And uh, tonight, uh, uh, there's, the, my Bible says, a psalm of degrees for Solomon. Um, some believe that Solomon actually uh, wrote this particular psalm. Others believe that David actually wrote it for him. And, uh, but really, that's not uh, neither here nor there. Uh, but we just know that it is a, uh, one of these psalm, psalms that they would sing as they went up uh, to the, the temple and uh, the temple march. And, and uh, a great song. And so I want to read the psalm and I want to ask you some questions uh, to uh, get your brain matter going. <clears throat> uh, when you're thinking about... Uh, What's being spoken of here, the title of the message is tonight is uh, Let the Lord Build the House. Let the Lord Build the House. And that's so important. So the Bible says here in verse number one, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the reading of your word. We do pray that as we preach tonight, these five verses, Lord, we pray that uh, we would give your people uh, what um, you have given us. And so we pray, uh, God, that uh, uh, thy will be done. Speak to us, Lord, and certainly uh, we want uh, to uh, allow you to build and um, uh, do your work, and we don't want to do it on our own. Just pray again, Lord, that uh, you would uh, help us to go home filled, thrilled, and willed to do exactly what you'd have us to do in the midst uh, of all the trials, temptations, uh, the battles that we face on a daily basis. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name for his sake. Amen. Obviously, here in the past, the scripture is speaking of a house. Now, when you think of a house, there's many ways to think of that. So I want you to tell me some of the ways. Now, there's all kinds of ways that we could actually go. Uh, with this particular passage of scripture when it comes to a house. Well, what do you think when you think about a house? A dwelling place. A dwelling place, all right. A dwelling place. What else? I think of a family, like a family name. Yeah. In the house of whoever. Exactly. A house, right, of a family name. That's, that's a house. A dwelling place. A house of a family name. What else? Huh? Shelter. shelter, right? Shelter, a place of shelter. Yep. What else? Anything else? Rental property. What? Rental property. Rental property. All right. We're not going to preach on that tonight, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. A house can be a rental property. What? Comfort, Comfort right? House. Uh, comforting should be anyway how about some of the things in the Bible when it speaks of a house the foundation what it's built on foundation what it's built upon yep maintenance 
maintenance, things that need to be done to it. How about it? Is this, is this, is this the house of God? Do we look at this as the house of God? Now, again, we know this is a building, but we do call this, right, the house of God. But even still, we also call ourselves, right, the house of God, right? Temple is the house of God, right? And um, so there's really all kinds of, like I said, ways that you could go with this passage of Scripture as far as a house. And... Um, we're going to look at it in a couple of different ways, but the, the main thing, what, what, what is the probably the main um, uh, theme of this particular psalm that we should get? It's, it's mentioned three times. One word. It's mentioned three times. Vain or empty, right? And so really that's truly what the psalm uh, is all about is is that it's vain and empty whatever kind of house you're talking about it could be a physical house right built just a regular house it'd be vain to build that house without the lord right amen and and, and then you could talk about the the household you, you've heard of the household of faith right that's you and i it'd be foolish right to build uh, the household of god the household of faith uh, without God, right? Amen. And then you think about your own house, your your your, your house at home, and, and it'd be foolish again to build your house on anything else but God. To leave God out of your house would be foolish, wouldn't it? And uh, and, and we talked about maintenance. We talked about uh, uh, all these different things. Comfort. You can you can name all kinds of things that that are are, are in a house. But really, the truth of the matter is they, they all come from the Lord if it's going to be right. <clears throat> and so let's look at the verse of Scripture, first of all. And I'm going to go, I'm going to, uh, actually, I, I believe since this was written for Solomon, or Solomon written it, writ, wrote it himself, written it, wrote it himself um, I, I believe it's probably, again, dealing with the, the temple and, 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 the, and the Jewish nation and, and, and their household, but also as it goes on talking about children and things like that, uh, of that household also. But first he says, except the Lord build the house. So obviously, uh, you know, God has to be in it. Amen. He said, they labor in vain that build it. And so really the truth of the matter is, if you're going to build a house, if you're going to do something for God, and, and by the way, I, I don't think I mentioned this, but you're also an individual house, right? You are, the Bible says, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? So you're a house yourself. And, and, and really what Sim said about the, uh, uh, what foundation uh, there, when it talks about the judgment seat that God's judging us, it talks about the foundation which our house is built upon. We just went through this a couple weeks ago, didn't we? As we finished up in Matthew chapter 7, where he talks about these two houses, these two dwelling places, these buildings that will be built. One's built on sand and one's built on the rock, right? And, and so, uh, again, Solomon says here, or David, whoever wrote the psalm, says, except the, the Lord build the house. So that's so important. They labor in vain that build it. So, first of all, we want to look at a house. Uh, a, a place, a dwelling place that was being built in, in Genesis chapter 11 without the Lord. And then we want to look in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and we want to look at the temple uh, which uh, Solomon built with the help of a whole lot of others. So look with me, if you would, at Genesis chapter 11. This is, uh, again, as we've been through this passage of Scripture already, um, but the Bible says in verse number 1 of Genesis 11, the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Now, God has made it so that within us that we are builders, you know. And uh, that's just the, the way we're made, you know. Uh, that's just, again, our nature. And so here the Bible says that the people were all of one language, and, uh, and it says, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in, in, in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. 
And it says, and they said one to another, go to now, uh, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And, 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 and they had brick of stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to now, let us build a city and a tower. Okay? And so we just read that the Bible says that except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. And so we have a prime example here of a people that have decided to work together uh, and, and, and build something, but build it without God. And so watch what it says here. It says, um, uh, uh, and they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven. And let us make, let us, make us a name. That's important, isn't it? Let us make us a name. And unless we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, again, we studied this passage of Scripture, so we don't want to go into too much detail uh, of, of that, of what we already said. But, but who, who, God told them to scatter. God told them uh, to move out. They decided, hey, we're, we don't want to move out. We don't want to do what God wants us to do. Uh, and so they're building this, this they, or they're planning to build this city and this tower apart from God. And the Lord came down. Now, he's not, he's not involved in this uh, as far as they're concerned. They don't think he is. And so go back again to what Solomon is saying in, in, in Psalm 127, verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Now, these people all came together, folks. And man, they're coming for a project, right? And folks, you can get a lot of people together for projects and a lot of things that are going on that God's not in. And it's going to be vain. It's going to be empty. Do you realize there's a day where people are going to stand before God and the works that they did in their own flesh, God's not accepting of that. If God's not in it, Everything is vain that God's not in. It's empty. It's worthless. It might as well, you might as well not do it, right? Amen? And so here you have these people, they've decided. And listen, I remember Kenny Baldwin preaching a message on this, and he said any preacher in his right mind would love this togetherness of how everybody came together for one cause to, to do this project. You know, we, right? But it's a project without God. It's hard to get people to do things, the things of God and work together. But here you got people working to do wrong without God. So the Bible says the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men build it. All right? So they, they're building this tower, building this city. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. They have one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they, which they, do, which they have imagined to do, okay? So, so the Lord sees this project, okay? And uh, folks, listen. Is this not a perfect picture of the sovereignty of God? <clears throat> that he's in control of everything. And that you and I can rely upon him and understand, listen, this country is faltering. This country here is going down for one reason and one reason alone. It's get kick God out. And, and eventually God's going to take it. Well, you and I, he's not called us to take care of it. He's called us to be a witness and a testimony of his grace and his mercy, amen, to a lost and dying people out there. Wasn't it exciting to see Dylan here this morning? Dylan was I didn't invite Dylan to church. Dylan just texted me last night after the ball game and said, hey, what time is your service? <laughs> What's the address? And then he showed up. Do you see that? I've had many times invited, and I'm not saying you don't invite people, folks, so don't, say, don't, don't take that in the wrong way. But what I am saying to you, you know, when a person is interested in themselves, and they, they, they text you, and they ask you when the services are, and they ask you where the place is, more than likely they're going to show up. I've been promised many, many times by people about me inviting them to go, oh, I'll be there. And the lost in times, they don't show up. But how exciting that is for for. for for, for, for him to come and, and uh, have a desire. And, and, and so, again, here in this passage of Scripture, now God comes down and he, under, he, he sees uh, what's going on and, and he already saw it anyway. We already know that he's sovereign and, and um, he's in control. And uh, I said that about Dylan because 
Listen, God builds his church. God is the one. It's not that we don't do anything, but God is the ultimate one that does the work. One plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. Amen. And so here he says, he said, let us go down there and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Now, we've mentioned this before, but I don't think you, I mean, I don't think we really grasp Unless you've ever been to a foreign country and you cannot communicate, <laughs> boy, oh boy. Uh, I remember when Tony went to Spain many times, uh, talking to him and, and praying with him and the, the struggle that he had, uh, a man in his 30s trying to learn a new language. Much easier to learn a new language as a child, young person, not as an older person. Man, he battled with it. He's ready to throw in the towel because he thought he'd never be able to speak the language. But God got him through. Amen. And so a difficult thing. And can you imagine what took place here? He said they, they couldn't speak to each other because God confounded their language. In verse 8, so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. You see that? Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Do you realize many of men have their own dreams and their own ideas and what they think they're going to do and all these kind of things? But listen, God's in control and he can destroy it whenever he desires. Many a city, many a mansion, many a place has been destroyed and it's no longer it's under rubble of what man thought he was going to do and keep and preserve. But God in his sovereignty has put it down. So again, Solomon says... Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. So we want to make sure that our labor is, is for the Lord, right? And uh, what God would have us to do. Now let's look at Solomon in 1 Chronicles 29. And look at this house. And, and of course, David um, providing all of these things. And I, I just want you to notice, again, just as well, it should be this way. Just as well as the evil people get together and they build things for their own selves and, and they have their own ideas, God's people should be willing to get together and, and allow God to work in their hearts and lives to, to build what ultimately he is building when it comes to the church and the household of faith. And, and uh, boy, oh boy, God help us. So let's look at this in First Chronicles 29. It says here, Furthermore, David... The king said unto the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Amen? Right? And so this particular temple, this palace, was to be built for God. He says, here, now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God. The gold for the things to be made of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, and the iron for the things of iron, and the wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, glistening stones, and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Now remember again, David had this in his heart to build God a, a temple, right? And, and God, of course, placed this in his heart. But he, and, and, and you remember Nathan the prophet said, Hey, man, go for it. Y'all remember that, right? He said, Go for it. But God said to Nathan, <laughs> No, David's not going to do it. Now, let's think about that for a minute. The Bible tells us that David was a man after God's own heart, right? What did it have to take? <laughs> now, here, here, David, right? It's his idea. He's, he's got a, a, just a, a great desire to do something for God, right? Y'all with me? And then he says to Nathan the prophet, remember, the prophet is the one that speaks to man, right? God's word. The priest takes our prayers to God. The prophet speaks from the Lord to man, and David says he wants to build this house for God. And the prophet says, go for it, man. I think that's a great idea. But what did God say? God said, no, David, you're not going to build it. Your son's going to build it. Now, for most people, most people, pride would set in. 
Well, I came up with the idea and why somebody else got to get the goat? Y'all not like that, right? Never been like that, have you? Well, you're lying because you oh, we're all like that, right? You got a great idea, man. You had a desire, excited, but yet he understood God's in charge. He could have built a temple. Could he not have, folks? Could he not have built his own temple apart from God? Now, folks, listen, this is all the stuff he had accumulated. <laughs> these, these were th David's in his dying days. He could have built a shrine for himself, right? But he chose to build and not labor in vain. You see, all the things that he accumulated, all the things in his life that he had done, it would have been burned up if he would have built his own place and said, oh, well, I'm going I'm to do it anyway. That was kind of like the way Saul was, wasn't he? I'm going to do it anyway. Samuel's not showing up. I'm going to do it anyway. No, no, you can't do that. Except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Then notice it says, he said, moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have had my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God. He says, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even 3,000 talents of gold, of gold of Ophir, of 7,000 talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the houses with all, the gold for things of, the, uh, of gold, the silver for things of silver, and all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And, 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 who, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? So it's a question. Who is willing Again, to, to do this work, to labor. It says, then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel, Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold, five talents, uh, thousand, thousand talents and, and 10,000 drams and seven and of silver, 10,000 talents of brass, 18,000 talents and 100,000 talents of iron. And they whom were, and they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of uh, Jael the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly. <laughs> Do you see, folks, things that are done for the Lord are done willingly. And hey, you can rejoice in the work of God. He said they offered willingly uh, because with a perfect heart offered willingly to the Lord. And David, the king, also rejoiced with great joy. Now, we're not going to read the rest of the passage. Turn back to uh, Psalm uh, uh, 127. But here you see uh, the total opposite house being built, temple being built. And, and really, the truth of the matter is... These particular people here in this particular psalm that are singing this psalm are marching forward uh, uh, to this city, this Jerusalem, this place that God had built in, in a temple uh, there. And they're rejoicing in that, that Solomon did not build the house in vain. And so, again, let's finish the verse in verse one. He says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. Now this is so important, folks, because again, does God want us to be lazy? No, no, absolutely not. But the work is not dependent upon us. Do you understand? God wants us to labor. God wants us to work. These particular people, they worked and they labored but listen, the labor was for God, amen? And it was God's house. And so their labor was not in vain. The same, the same people, not the same people, but you understand in Genesis chapter 11, they were working hard and laboring and doing all, but their labor was in vain because God wasn't in it. So what's the important factor here? The Lord, the Lord makes sure whatever you're doing, I can't tell you what to do other than what the Bible says, but make sure whatever you're doing in life that the Lord is in it. Amen? That's the whole point here. Whatever your life is about, make sure it's about the Lord. You see that Solomon built this great temple for God because God was in it. 
And God gave them all the stuff. And God gave them the ability to do all these things. And, and so again, and, and just like the city, is it important to have a watchman over the city? It is, right? But, but listen, they can watch all day. If the Lord's not in it, then it doesn't matter how much they watch, right? Do you think that, that uh, uh, the, 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 the walls of Jericho, do you think that they did not have watchmen? <laughs> they had plenty of them, right? <laughs> but it didn't do them any good, did it? Right? And so it, it, whatever we're doing, whatever our service, what, whatever we're building, let's, let's make sure that, that God is in it, right? Amen? Otherwise, it's vain. And then verse 2 is such a key verse here. It really is. It is vain for you to rise up early. And I'm going to ask you a question here in a minute, okay? So be ready. It is vain for you to rise up early and sit up late and eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. This is so, so, so important. And contextually, it goes right with what he's already said. What do you think that means there? Have you ever heard this statement before? I believe you have, because I've made it before. People make this statement. A lot of times you hear it in preaching. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather burn out than rust out. You ever heard that before? Both of them are equally wrong. Yeah, you realize that, right? God, God's not calling you to burn out. He tells you this right here. Do you, do you hear what he's saying? He's not telling you to burn the candle at both ends. <laughs> to do the work of God. Is he? I mean, do you see what he said there? Y'all yeah, read it to me because I'm not up there. What, let's, let's, what does it say? <clears throat> Okay, so, so why would a person be rising up early <clears throat> and staying up late? Because the work's got to be finished. Somebody's got to do it. Are y'all with me? Maybe you're not. <laughs> but listen, God hasn't caught, listen, oftentimes people that do this, God's not in the work. God gives his people rest. Listen, God does not expect you. Now listen, but now don't think that there, there's not a time that God might have you burn the midnight oil. <laughs> okay? But God's not calling you to burn the midnight oil every night. You won't last. Right? You see, I like this term, what one writer said. It, it's not that God wants you to burn out or rust out. He wants you to wear out. Like a good tool. That's what God does. Those of you that have tools, you, I've mentioned to you this before, and I've said this statement to you before, that, that hey, there's, there's just a, your hand grips to it in a certain way. And then it breaks, like, oh, man. Now, somebody that's not a tool man, you know, doesn't understand that, right? You say, man, just get a new one. Oh, I got to break it in, right? Is that not true? And God does the same thing. God's not calling you. Oftentimes, people that, that, that are, 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 are uh, 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 getting up early and, and going at it. And, and uh, now it doesn't, again, folks, it doesn't mean that you don't get up early. It doesn't mean that you don't stay up late at times. But hey, most times people that are staying up late, and that's what he's speaking of here. He, he says to eat the bread of sorrows. They're thinking about all their problems and all the difficulties and, and, and what I got to do next. You think we're too busy today? I know we are. And you know why we're too busy today? Because our lives are absent from God. God's not the most important person in our lives. If really we thought about our, 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 our own individual houses, it would be more important that we spend time with God than we spend time with anybody else. Right? And yet we say, I don't have time. I have, I have this to do. I have that to do. I have all these things. All of us are guilty of this. 
And so here, he's reinforcing again, it's vanity to do this on your own. And, and we know, now this is not everybody, but for the most part, people that do all these things and they have to have all this stuff and, and they keep laboring and laboring and laboring, God's not in it. Let me read a passage of scripture just to let you know that um, I would try to quote it, but I probably will mess it up. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's not that God doesn't want us to labor. God does want us to labor. It's not that God doesn't want us to work. God does want us to work. But notice, we need to rest in Christ. And all the work that we're doing should be pointing back to Christ and what he's doing in our hearts and lives and that he's building. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Therefore, Paul has mentioned all these things about, about Christ and about the body and about God changing and, and us going, uh, the resurrection is the resurrection chapter. He says in verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, <clears throat> excuse me, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For ye know, <clears throat> for, for as much as ye know that your labor in the your labor, that's what I told you, is not in vain in the Lord. See how important that is? Which house are you? Well, you should be the house of the Lord. And that house should be built upon the Lord. Now let's look at the last three verses here. As he talks about this, this household, he said, Lo, uh, uh, children are a heritage of the, Lord, or of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So here again, speaking of, now he's speaking of this, this, this household and, and, and children, again, carrying on the heritage of the Lord. This is so important. It doesn't mean that they will carry the heritage of the Lord. But we need to teach them about the Lord in our homes. Our homes should be built. He says, children are a heritage of the Lord. They've been given as a reward. The fruit of the womb is his reward. It's a blessing to be able to have children. Not, not everybody can have children, though. Right? Right? But yet God, God uh, uh, again, says that it's a blessing and it's a reward for, 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 to have children. So we ought to be thankful for that. But hey, you, you might not, you could be unmarried. But hey, you could still uh, have children as far as uh, uh, ministering to them and, 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 and talking to them about the Lord and being an influence upon their, their lives. And, and uh, we're blessed to be able to have children. But speaking in the spiritual sense, children being born again. I don't know the, the last time, I'm trying to think of the last time that I led somebody to the Lord. But it's exciting to see people come to God. And boy, oh boy, when, a, when, a, when a, a mother has a natural, oh well, she's not a mother yet, a woman has a natural desire uh, for children, God has put that within her. And boy, God's church should have a desire spiritually to see people born again, to be saved by the grace of God. That ought, that ought to be our desire if this place here is a, a household of God, if it's a, a church, uh, I believe God wants uh, us to be a witness and a testimony. Whatever way that might be, you might pass out tracks. You, uh, God knows your personality and who you are and all those things. But we ought to at least have a, a desire uh, to have this spiritual reward of being blessed with spiritual children. And of course, again, he's speaking of physical children here. But we ought to think in terms of uh, I mean, uh, he speak physical children. We ought to think in terms of spiritual children. But notice this. He said they are, in verse 4, he said they're arrows in the hand of a mighty man. So are children of the youth. Now, when you think about an arrow, and, and again, you've got to think about their day. You, you can't just take a, a stick, right, and put it in a bow and, and, and shoot it. Well, you can, but it wouldn't be an arrow. So, so what do you have to do with an arrow? Use it. Arrows are made out of what? Especially in their day, they're made out of what? Wood. They're made out of sticks. Okay? That's how they had to make them. 
And so sticks got things going here and there, and so there has to take what? Y'all sleepy tonight? It takes time. It takes molding. It takes, listen, and really that's what he's talking about here. You, you just, you go out and you, you take this branch off a tree and, and, and you, you begin to form it and you make it right and, and you want it to be precise. Why? Because you want it to hit the mark, <laughs> right? You, you want to make an arrow. You don't make an arrow that's crooked, right? <laughs> you get a boomerang effect with an arrow. It comes back, hits you. Hello? It takes time, right? It takes molding. And it's the same thing with children. Children are, are, are to be like, that's what he's talking about here. They're to be formed, and they're to be formed in their youth. Now again, sad to say, oftentimes, children that grow up in Christian homes, they end up worse than children that don't. Now folks, listen, we can, we can go, man, what did I do, and all these other kind of things. We all make mistakes. But the bottom line is this. If you, if you strove to, to raise them in the right way and, and wanted to do the right things, and all, it doesn't mean that they're going to turn out to be right. But it also does mean that we ought to do this in our home to try to form them in, in their youth, to teach them the things of God and, and, and that they might be what God would have them to be. They have really, and that doesn't mean they have no chance, but they have a better chance when you raise them up when they're young in the home and, and teach them the things of God. And then he says this, and this is interesting, and I'm just going to throw this out here to you. And so, don't, don't say I'm saying this is true, but he says, Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Full of what? Arrows. Arrows. Children. Right? That's what he's comparing. He's comparing arrows to children. We live in a day, and you're not going to like what I got to say. I'm not going to tell you up front, you're not going to like what I got to say. Are you? About this thing of having a quiver of children. Can I ask you a question in 2021? And going a long way back. Who decides whether we're going to have children or not? Love. Right? Right? Wrong. Right? <laughs> now all of us in here would be against, I believe... I'm pretty, I'm, I'm not even germex on this. I'm 100%. Every person in here would be against abortion. Right? But I'm far from germex on about what I'm getting ready to say. I believe a lot of people in here would not be against birth control. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But do you know what birth control is? It's just what it says it is. Hello? Now you get mad if you want. But you got to think about this. Birth control. So Jim, I'm not picking on you. I'm, you we, I, I, believe, I believe exactly what you said. But birth control is, is what it says. You are in control. You've decided. Now, we get flaming hot mad at people that give, get abortions. There ain't a lot of people getting flaming hot mad at people that use birth control. Got to help us, folks. We got to understand. Now, where did that come from? Where did this concept come from? Did it come from God or man? I'm just, try, I'm just trying to get you to think. But we're in a society today where we're deciding. You hear people today. I talk to young people. I'm married. They say, well, we plan on having this amount of children. Listen, children are heirs of the Lord. If God wants to give you 35, he can. Now, you women are like, whoa, <laughs> watch it now, 35. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an exaggerator at times. <laughs> this is thought-provoking, isn't it? 
You say, maybe not. Maybe say, Pastor, you could get off this subject, man. You might not have church tomorrow. <laughs> Right? No, I'm, just tell, I'm just telling you, studying and, and God bringing this to my heart. And, and I remember when I first saw this as an idea in my mind, reading a book called The Ministry of Marriage. And uh, he mentions this in that book. And uh, <laughs> I mean, are you with me, folks? Can God not control this? Can he not? Can not God decide how many children you have without you deciding? Does God know how many? Now, folks, I don't know. Listen, I'm not God. We have to see this. Now, the sovereignty of God in this too, right? This is, this is foreign to us. Because we've allowed a culture, a society, to dictate to us the things that we do. And yet we don't want to admit it. This is scary, folks. How about this? I can't afford that many children. Well, well we might be able to afford them if we didn't have to have so much stuff. Right? It's really about what we want to do. But all I'm asking you to do is go home and meditate on some of these things. Think about some of these things. The Bible says here that happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. It really, again, it's speaking of these children helping the father and the mother and the hair to carry on the name. Amen. Oftentimes, children, you know, you look at these businesses and, and a lot of these Christian businesses, um, I'm not going to mention any names, but then the sons take over and, and, and they do things that their fathers would never do. That wasn't the purpose. Their, their fathers, God blessed their businesses and, 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 and had them be successful because they were built upon the Lord. And then, and then some, the son comes along and his father's expecting him to do it just like he did it because he's doing it as unto the Lord. And yet he says, well, we can't do it that way. Too much pressure, too much this, too much that in the society. And here again, what he's speaking of here is this uh, uh, carrying on the name. And, and, and the more you have, and of course, these were uh, obviously fighting people. And so the more you had in the family, the more men there, you had fighters to protect. And so again, we need to think about all that we're doing. Except the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor, <clears throat> excuse me, they labor in vain that build it. So no matter what kind of household it is, just a, just a, a dwelling place, a palace, whatever kind of city it might be, a household of, uh, of a family. It needs to be built upon the Lord. And if it's not, it's vain. And so all of us, again, I said all those things. It, it doesn't mean that, 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 that we might not have practiced those things ourselves. And God is sovereign. He knows all of these things. But I believe we really need to rethink about some of the things that we've done in the past and the things that we're doing today and ask God to help us to know that he's in whatever we're doing. Right? Amen? Let's stand to our feet and have a word of prayer. No form of invitation again this morning or tonight. Heavenly Father, our great God, we're thankful for your word. Father, we pray that uh, we would not uh, say anything that would be contrary to your word. And Father, we just pray that uh, we would be thinkers. And Father, we would uh, again understand, Father, that you're in control and, and uh, that uh, we can trust you with our lives. Father, we pray, God, that you'd help us and help Faith Baptist Church always to be built upon a sure foundation of the Word of God and upon you, Christ, and Christ alone. Teach us, Father, as we uh, go home uh, tonight that uh, we don't want to build our lives on anything that's vain and empty, especially upon ourselves, because we know that's vain and empty. 
Father, again, thank you for letting us be here, and we pray that, uh, again, that you give us a, a great week, uh, a week that would be, we would be found serving and honoring you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.